a love for seahorses led an Anglesey family to develop their award-winning brand Credit Harala Hamilton on the menu this week's recipes Allison and David Lee Wilson salt has been sprinkled on top of Barack Obama's favorite chocolates and served with quail's eggs at Prince William's wedding. It is sold in high-end delicatessens and supermarkets, including Harvey Nichols, Fortnum Mason, Waitrose and Mark Spencer, and is beloved of renowned chefs from Heston Blumenthal to El Bolis for on Adria. And the Anglesey-based couple have seahorses to thank for its existence. It was their experience launching the Sea Zoo which would become Wallace's largest aquarium on the island in 1983 that led them to become one of the world's leading salt producers. We were breeding seahorses, which require the most incredibly clean seawater, David explains. It made us realize that the seawater we were sitting on was an asset. In 1996, after experimenting with a pan of water from the Menai Strait the strip of sea separating Anglesey from the mainland by boiling it on their aga until it formed crystals, the Lee Wilsons launched Halen Mun which means Anglesey Salt. Today the company exports to more than 20 countries, and its salt has been awarded PDO-protected designation of origin status, joining the likes of Parmaham and Champagne. Halen Mon is based in a unique landscape in an area of outstanding natural beauty. Positioned just 75 yards from the sea, its 1.25 million pounds salt coat salt factory and visitor center has views of Snowdonia, Carmarthen Castle and the Menai Strait, and echoes to the sound of curlews and oyster catchers. An essential part of David's day is checking the levels in the seawater, credit Harala Hamilton the salt is harvested by hand using traditional techniques, which is part of what gives Halen Mon its particular character and texture. It doesn't melt into hot food but holds its snowflake shape, and has a clean, delicate, almost sweet flavor. With grapes you talk about terroir we call it merwar, says David. The Gulf Stream brings us new seawater twice a day and there's a giant mussel bed in front of us, with each mussel filtering between 5 and 9 pints an hour. It's one of the things that gives us a distinct difference. A pipeline takes seawater from the Menai straight into the factory, where, once it has been filtered through sand and charcoal, the water is heated to create a concentrated brine. This is left in shallow tanks where crystals form and sink to the bottom. Each morning, the salt flakes are carefully harvested using large shovels, then, after a final rinse to remove any last traces of seashells, they are allowed to dry overnight. The next day the salt is put into a low-temperature oven, to extract any remaining moisture, before being packaged. Each morning, the salt flakes are carefully harvested using large shovels. Credit Harala Hamilton creating salt is an expensive, labor-intensive process that takes 10 to 12 days from sea to table. Each day Halen Mons 8 rigorously trained salt makers judge the taste and texture to ensure a consistent product, and an essential part of David's day is checking the levels in the seawater. I use a salinometer to tell me how much salt there is. We only want to pump seawater ashore when it is at its maximum saltiness. The company also sells smoked water, made using a top-secret technique it has taken years to perfect the product, and earlier this year Halen Mon won the Queen's Award for Sustainability. David's research has seen him travel to Tokyo, where salt is revered if someone moves house you give them the gift of the best salt, and he has learned how texture is part of the taste. In order to get to grips with the crystallization process, he returned to university. I was the middle-aged man sat at the back doing chemistry, he says, laughing. The Halen Mon range now extends to 10 salts, including one smoked over oak chips, one infused with vanilla and one made with charcoal. It's an amazing matte black color and it's meant to be good for your digestion, explains Jess Lee Wilson, the couple's daughter, who is in charge of product and recipe development as well as branding, marketing and PR. We sell it to a few restaurants who finish a single hand dived scallop with a few flakes. For Christmas, Halen Mon is creating a salt smoked over spruce. We call it our Christmas tree salt, Jess says. It's delicious with game, adds Allison, and not too overpowering. Allison Lee Wilson and her daughter, Jess, cook with vegetables from the garden and salt made by their company using water from the Menai Strait Credit Harala Hamilton. Jess also works with the vegetarian food writer Anna Jones, and both she and Allison are keen cooks. They take their inspiration from what's in season in the family's garden, a couple of miles away from the factory, where everything from apples, pears and hazelnuts to cabbage, cavolo nero and fennel is grown. The garden is my passion, says David. The site has been continuously cultivated for 220 years. Salt maker David Lee Wilson in his garden on Anglesey, with his Jack Russell credit Harala Hamilton with so much salt to hand, preserving is a natural occupation for the Lee Wilsons, and pickled fennel is a favorite.
We use our fine sea salt, which has a really good consistency to draw all of the moisture from the fennel, yet seasons it with a beautiful, pure flavor, explains Jess. Their vanilla salt, which was inspired by a family holiday to Tahiti, works well in sweet dishes, such as the pavlova Allison makes every season using different fruits from the garden, or on top of a creme brulee, so you get that lovely salty sweetness when you crack into it, says Jess. They implore me to sprinkle it over seafood, too. As for the crystal clear water just outside Halen Mon HQ, it now serves another purpose as well. Heston Blumenthal got in touch a few years ago about smoking some water, explains Jess. We thought it sounded a bit crazy, but we tried it, using techniques that are a closely guarded secret, and it's now something that's really growing for us. Incorporated into the glut on the previous page, it tastes very autumnal, and smells like bonfire night. After 21 years of business, David sees no signs of slowing sales. I was convinced that salt and chocolate wouldn't last, he says, but we now supply six chocolate manufacturers. Thanks to its lack of heavy processing and its trace minerals, sea salt appeals to the health conscious, too. It's quite nice to be off the hook, David says. We've been under attack for 10 years but sugar is now being seen as the bad white crystal. At last salt seems to be enjoying its time in the sun. Hollandman.com cook pickled fennel with lemon zest and bay beautiful with the galette below or with smoked fish, charcuterie or gammon. Makes one large jar ingredients three small fennel bulbs, trimmed, with any discolored outer leaves removed two tablespoons Halen Mon Pure Sea Salt in a finer flake. 500 milliliters rice vinegar 80 grams castor sugar 8 bay leaves 1 teaspoon black peppercorn zest of 4 unwaxed lemons method wash the fennel bulbs then slice them in half and discard the cores. Slice the fennel as thinly as you can. In a large bowl, scatter the fennel all over with salt and scrunch it together with your hands. Set aside for an hour to draw out water. Warm the vinegar, sugar and bay leaves in a pan over a medium heat until the sugar has dissolved. When the hour is up, tip the fennel into a colander and drain as much of the released liquid as possible. Put the fennel back in the bowl and toss in the peppercorns and lemon zest along with the bay leaves from the vinegar. Fill a clean jar with the fennel. Pour over the vinegar and use the end of a wooden spoon to work it down into the fennel. Screw on the lid and leave for 24 hours before eating. This will keep for 23 weeks in the fridge. Smoked galette of Stilton, squash and thyme smoked water gives this a beautiful depth of flavor. Serves 46 ingredients 750 grams butternut or other squash, deseeded, peeled and cut into 2 centimeters chunks olive oil. For cooking 1 onion, finely chopped 200 grams spinach, washed and squeezed dry 1 tablespoon Halen Mon Oak smoked water 1 sheet short crust pastry 10 green seedless grapes, have 75 grams Stilton 50 grams walnuts a few times sprigs, leaves pick 25 grams butter, melted method preheat the oven to 200 CGA's Mark 6. Toss the squash in a roasting tray with enough olive oil to coat and a generous pinch of salt and pepper. Roast in the center of the oven for 25 minutes, until the squash is soft and beginning to color at the edges. Place on a plate to cool and leave the oven on. While the squash is roasting you can get on with the rest of the filling. Warm a tablespoon of olive oil in a heavy-bottomed frying pan and add the onion, along with a pinch of salt. Cook over a medium heat, stirring regularly, for 810 minutes, until the onion is soft and translucent throughout. Add the spinach and cook until just wilted. If it's very watery, drain off the liquid before adding the oak smoked water and stirring through. Remove the onion and spinach to a plate to cool. Grease a large baking tray with a little oil. Roll the pastry out into a rough round about 20 centimeters across and place on the baking tray. Put the slightly cooled squash in the middle of the pastry round, leaving a 23 cm border. Dot the smoky spinach mixture over the top, then nestle the grapes in and around the spinach and squash. Crumble over the stilton in large chunks and scatter over the walnuts and thyme leaves. To finish the galette, lift up the pastry edges and fold them over the filling, using your fingers to pinch and pleat a little as you go. Brush the melted butter over the exposed pastry and place the galette in the center of the oven for 20 minutes, until the pastry is crisp and golden and the cheese is melted and bubbling. Serve with a crisp green salad or a grape root vegetable salad. Blackberry and sage pavlova with salted caramel sauce delicious with a glass of dessert wine. Serves 8 ingredients for the pavlova 3 free-range egg whites 175 grams castor sugar 1 teaspoon cream of tartar for the sauce 100 grams granulated sugar 30 grams unsalted butter cubed 60 milliliters single cream 1 teaspoon Halen Mon Pure 
Sea salt with vanilla air pure sea salt smoked over oak for the topping 500 milliliters double cream 400 grams blackberries a few sprigs of sage method preheat the oven to 160 cga's mark 3. Line a baking tray with greaseproof paper. Whisk the egg whites with an electric whisk. When they look nice and iry, add the sugar a teaspoon at a time, along with the cream of tartar. When the mixture is glossy, spread it onto the prepared tray in a rough circle or square, and use the back of a spoon to even it out slightly. Bake for an hour until the pavlova is crisp and marshmallowy, then allow to cool in the switch it off oven. To make the sauce, melt the sugar in a heavy bottomed pan over a medium heat, stirring occasionally. Keep an eye on the pan and when you have a light gold liquid, whisk in the butter as quickly as you can. Remove from the heat, whisk in the cream and add the salt. Allow to cool slightly. To serve, whisk the double cream to stiff peaks and spread it on the pavlova. Tumble over the blackberries and drizzle over the salted caramel sauce. Finish with a few sprigs of sage.